Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce Education USA to you. Education USA is a network supported by the US Department of State to advise students in the application process to US universities. We have seven advising centers in India. To find out more, please visit educationusa.state.gov. As part of our services, we provide a webinar on two Saturdays a month. We encourage you and your friends to join us for these webinars. Today, we will be having a presentation on the advantages of rural universities in the US. We have with us Ambassador George Staples, the International Recruitment Executive, and Ms. Lily Collins, International Student Coordinator, both at Lincoln Memorial University. Thank you so much, Ambassador Staples and Lily, for being present today, especially at such a late hour for you. Participants, we will shortly begin the webinar. If you face any technical issues, please type in the chat box and I will try to help you there. Otherwise, please save your questions for the end when we will have time for question and answers. Ambassador Staples and Lily, the floor is all yours. All right, thank you very much for the very kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be with everybody today. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the advantages of studying in the countryside, as you may say, or in rural universities, which are smaller uh, universities sometimes, but they're not in major urban areas. They're not in large cities. Uh, so what's the advantages of studying in smaller uh, universities who are that are located in smaller communities? Okay, first of all, uh, you've got fewer distractions. Uh, I certainly don't have to tell all of you who are living and working in India about uh, traffic and noise and all kinds of things that are going on in shops and with people. And all of those things can affect you when you're trying to study at a university. Um, the other thing to think about, of course, is that all of those things are temptations to perhaps not study, to leave campus, to do things that will uh, might get you behind in your studies. So there's less temptation because there are fewer distractions. When you have less temptation and fewer distractions, then you can better focus on your education, on your responsibilities. To study abroad in the U.S. is a uh, is a big, perhaps expense, a big responsibility. You've got a lot uh, to think about to make your families proud of you. And you need to focus, especially when you first start, to do well and to have a really good experience. And the other thing, and I think this is very big, uh, especially when you go to another country to study, uh, you need friends. You need people who will look after you, who will help you. And you're going to have more camaraderie, more friendships with your fellow students because people get to know one another easier at a smaller university, out in, in, not in the big urban areas. Uh, one example would be the case of, for example, uh, Michigan State University, which has 40,000 students. Uh, you could easily get lost in that kind of situation. Uh, our university, Lincoln Memorial, we have 4,000 and 2,000 are undergraduates. And people know one another and you'll have a chance to uh, see that later after we're finished. Uh, and I'll, I'll mention it again in just a little bit. The other advantage that you will think about uh, in studying at um, universities that are not in major urban areas, that are not really, really big, and the direct communication with faculty. Here at our university, for example, uh, we have uh, students to professor ratio of 13 to 1, and we don't have teaching assistants. So every time you take a class, you're with the professor, and the professor will know you before and after class, uh, and the frequent contact with advisors and staff in the School of Business or the School of Medicine or, or Science, all of that means a lot because you're getting personal attention. Um, when you first start again, um, that means that if you're having trouble adjusting, if you're having trouble really understanding what the professor says, 
uh, if you're in a big lecture hall with 200 students, it's hard to go up sometimes and, and just say that. If you're with 10, 12, 13 other students and they're your, already becoming your friends, uh, the professor, the faculty, they don't seem so distant. And you'll get that personal attention and you'll get off to a very, very good start. The other thing, of course, and it makes sense, you saw the picture on the first slide, you have better access to the outdoors, less air pollution, traffic, and that all means less time pressure. You don't feel subconsciously that you're pressured to do this or to do that. There's so much going on around you. You can get out, uh, you can get fresh air. There's sporting activities. Uh, sometimes that's hard to do, uh, in a major urban environment in a big city. Uh, where we're located, for example, we're just five, 10 minutes from one of the United States uh, major national parks. And our students can go and hike trails and cook out and uh, really relax and unwind. And again, as you saw in the first picture, the campuses at rural universities because of this are really beautiful. And uh, that, that's something to be, be valued. You want to be in a place where you can study and feel good and not feel that the facilities are old and cramped. Uh, they're beautiful and very pretty. And that, believe it or not, will lessen pressure and help you study better. Okay, here's a big issue, especially, I'm sure, for all of you and thinking about things uh, with your parents, perhaps. Uh, thinking of studying uh, in the U.S. or your colleagues and friends, and that's safety. Uh, regretfully, a lot of people form opinions about the United States, about America, based on the movies, and based on crime stories, and things you read about in the headlines. Um, you know, this can happen anywhere. But in a smaller setting, in a rural uni university, not a big urban city, you have better security, better safety. Uh, we, for example, have our own campus police. They know everybody. They patrol regularly. Uh, we just don't have that much contact sometimes with large crowds and large groups of people where things might happen. And this means that everybody looks out for everyone, for each other. The students, they know who's who. They go to class. They go to the cafeteria. They go to the games. Uh, they know. But the other thing is you're in a smaller environment and people outside of the university in the town, they know about the students. They really value having a university in their community. And the authorities, the townspeople, they look out for the students. Um, the, the young people with a backpack are not a strange sight or an exception. It's normal to see them. And uh, that really means a lot in terms of looking out for one another and going to school in a safe environment. And I know uh, any of you whose parents are concerned or have friends who are concerned, that means a lot when you're not in a major urban setting. Uh, here's a, a thought I wanted to share with you that we don't really think about sometimes. It doesn't matter if you're on a full government scholarship with all expenses paid or your family may have been saving for years to offer you the chance to go overseas and study. Doesn't matter. Everybody has to save money. Everybody has to watch expenses. Rural areas, not the major urban cities, have a lower cost of living. That's just, just life. And I'm sure it's probably the same in India as well. Uh, if you're in Delhi or Mumbai, it's going to cost more money than if you're living outside of the major cities. And it's the same here in America as well. The other thing is that there are more campus activities, therefore, on campus, and you don't have to spend money by going to a lot of attractions that you would have uh, in the major urban areas. Uh, the students spend more time with each other. Uh, they share costs share rides, uh, it, it, it's a smaller community. If you're in the major urban areas, then there's 
more restaurants and more activities and more shopping malls and more things to do. And it's very easy, unless you're really disciplined, to lose track of your money and not manage it well. And you'll be so busy doing things that by the 15th of the month, your monthly budget, you're surprised to see, may just be about gone. That's not going to happen at a smaller university outside of the major urban areas. And that's a, a big factor to consider when you're thinking about the cost of university. Now, sometimes when you hear rural or smaller university, you may think, well, that they don't offer much. Nothing could be further than the truth. Here's a sample of our undergraduate majors in the different programs. And you can see we have a really big selection of courses and majors, just like any other university. The difference is the classes are smaller. The professors have more time to spend with students, as I mentioned. But don't think when you're thinking about where to go for university that you, you need to go to a bigger place in a bigger city because there'll be more choices. Not necessarily. We have it all, and I'll talk some more in particular about the business programs. Graduate programs, again, most rural universities, smaller universities will have the same kind of programs, just like the urban universities uh, in big cities. Business, uh, education, uh, science. We have our own nursing school, which is one of the top schools in, in the whole country at our a smaller university, um, MPAs, and we also have doctoral programs in business, education, law, medical science. Uh, very few universities have a medical school. We do. And again, uh, that's unusual in the, in the uh, rural universities, smaller universities, but you can find them. Uh, don't think that you just have to think about large universities to find these kinds of opportunities for an education. And our new veterinary school, by the way, is going to be opening in the springtime. And I have some pictures to show you when I'm done as well. MBA. Uh, I know from uh, being in the this business of trying to attract international students and doing webinars like this and meeting with students, uh, in India, I'm told everybody says an MBA is really important, and I can understand why. Uh, your country has had tremendous economic growth. Uh, it's a leader in the region. Your graduates uh, are holding and, and doing wonderful work in their jobs here in America. And to really progress, an MBA has become very essential in a lot of industries. Uh, the, our MBA is extremely attractive. It is not like others where it takes a long number of hours. We have very specific concentrations. And um, if you look at the tuition and fees, the general MBA 30 hours, if you want to concentrate in management, marketing, sports management, 36 hours. But the cost is $15,000 or $18,000. Uh, that sounds like a lot. Really? Take a look at some of the larger urban programs and what an MBA will cost. And you could be looking at $40,000 or up even higher. Uh, why is our cost so low for what is a nationally recognized and very well highly regarded respected MBA program? It's because being a smaller university in a rural area, we're serving a community in a region that is not as well known as the bigger city uh, regions and where younger people and students who come to us in America may not have and may not be as rich or well off as the students in the bigger cities. So we keep our programs attractive to everybody. They're highly rated and highly effective and at smaller universities universities, rural universities, you will find this to be the case. Don't think that to get by in this world, you need a degree from a university with a big name. 
You just need the degree and the training, and then you have to prove yourself. And no one's going to ask you after a while, where did you go to school? They want to know if you can do the job. And a good MBA program trains you to do the job. Okay, next slide. This is our undergraduate uh, fees and tuition. I'll just, just very quickly, uh, you can get copies of the, the slides and, and look at it later. But notice we do have scholarships. That's always a question. And at, at our school, at our university, international students are treated just like American students. If you have good grades, and if you have taken the ACT or the SAT, and um, they have uh, information on that at the um, Education USA office, and your scores are good, then you can get significant um, awards, which is shown in the left side of the box. Scholarships, tuition reduction, and it makes a big difference. Our total cost uh, for the year in tuition, 21480 you're going to get less than that. And even if you haven't taken those tests, but you have good grades, every international student gets a scholarship of at least $4,000. So that's significant. We're a private university. It makes it more affordable. And rural universities all have opportunities like this that you should think about and seriously consider. They won't play on this screen of mine for you to watch there. But at the Education USA office, Deborah's going to write these links down or put them into the chat box so that you can have them for later and take a look. And I ask that you do so. The first link is a general one, just three minutes, about Lincoln Memorial University. And it's uh, about the history. We're named after President Abraham Lincoln, one of our most famous uh, leaders in the history of the country. And you'll get a good look at what a rural university out in the mountains of East Tennessee looks like. And it's just beautiful. And you'll see what these students are doing in this region and the contribution they're making to the economy. And you will as well. The second link is to a recent announcement by uh, U.S. News & World naming our university as the number one value university, best value in our region. And in that announcement, there's another video that'll play that, that you'll see, that, that's what the link is to, three minutes, and it's students actually talking. And they talk about the advantages of going to a smaller university, a rural university versus a big urban area, but we're not far from anything. And this again is the case that you will find in many universities like us outside of the major urban areas. So please take a look at the links and uh, they're very short uh, videos and I think you'll, you'll enjoy them. Finally, uh, contact information. Here's how to reach me if you have other questions, how to reach Lily. There's our website. And uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions and talk to you in more detail. You can always set up a Skype conversation for more detailed conversations with you and your families. Uh, I just want you to have this. And when you wrap it up and finish, you graduate. And uh, that looks like students just anywhere. And I want to say uh, thank you for that. And before we go, uh, let me pull up another uh, presentation here, very short, uh, just some pictures. Uh, that's the entrance. As I say, we're in a pretty mountainous area and it's just gorgeous. That's the medical school. Um, they take uh, 250 students a year. Medical schools in the U.S. are very, very hard to get into. Um, but here at our school, for example, at our university, if you major in pre-med, biology or pre-med chemistry, or biomedical professions in the graduate level, 
uh, if you have good grades, uh, you will get be known around at the medical school, and all of those graduates of ours are guaranteed an interview. If the stars align and all goes well, we do accept international students into our medical school. And those who attend uh, LMU get get a good shot and get admitted. I think that's a that's a real a real plus. Again, because we're here at a, a rural university. Uh, that's a math and science building. It's uh, it's new. You wouldn't believe how beautiful it is inside. The setting is just gorgeous. And uh, Here's a sample of up-to-date, modern, state-of-the-art classrooms, which you'll find uh, throughout the campus. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty spectacular and a great learning environment. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, we have a museum with the artifacts and a lot of the history of this uh, famous man, this famous president. It's right here on the campus, and we get a lot of visitors and we're in the middle of an expansion program, uh, a great piece of American history right here in this small community uh, in Northeast Tennessee. Sports, uh, when you see the first video, it'll take you, uh, the first YouTube video, it'll show you a lot about our athletic teams. Uh, here's just a shot of the arena on the inside. And here you go from that national park nearby I told you about. Uh, they have an overlook that you go up to. And you can see three different states. And how's that for a, a place of beauty and a great environment to get a really, really wonderful education? So with that, uh, we're going to stop. And um, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, Lily and I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. And uh, we uh, encourage you to think about universities like Lincoln Memorial. You'll have a great education. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ambassador Staples. Um, students, if you have any questions, either about st studying at a university in the countryside or about um, Lincoln Memorial University specifically as well, Please uh, type them into the question tab and we will um, answer your questions. Hello. Yes, Hi. go ahead. Hello. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't I can't hear you very clearly. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. So questions, uh, students are not, their mics are muted, but uh, they can type questions into the question tab where we will take uh, questions and re reply. Okay. Okay. There's a first question here. Can uh, Ambassador Staples, can you see the question in your question tab? No, I can't. Um, I, can't. I can read it out for you. The question well, is, are okay. there sports? Yeah, go ahead and read it out. Yeah. Yeah. Are there sports scholarships in your university for internationally ranked squash junior players? Um, What's the best? No, we, we, yeah, we, we have um, nationally ranked uh, basketball, soccer players, tennis players, um, uh, what, what else, lacrosse, number of sports, but I don't believe we have squash players, no. I wish we did. I like to play squash, but uh, we don't. I'm sorry. Do you have, uh, Ambassador Staples, do you have any other scholarships um, besides the one you, you mentioned? So I think you mentioned that 
if you have a certain ACT score or SAT score and a certain GPA, then you qualify for various scholarships. Is that the case? Yes. That's correct. That qualifies for what we call Lincoln Awards, and um, that qualifies for the um, uh, reductions in tuition for the scholarships shown on the chart. A, um, uh, those are, uh, Lily, please answer as well, but I believe those are the only scholarships that we have for international students. But yes. as you can see, it's, it's quite significant. Yeah. Students, any other questions? Please type them into the chat box. Or the question tab. Uh, I can see that someone has a hand raised. If you have a question, uh, Alessandra, then please type them. Type the question into the questions box. Okay, I've got another question here, which came in privately. As there is, um, are there any leadership or cultural programs in at the university? Yes, uh, we we have a, uh, a multicultural office that uh, has a number of activities with uh, our, our various students, uh, including trips to surrounding cities. Um, uh, international nights, um, uh, activities uh, involving um, uh, international uh, organizations and, and, and groups. We have sororities and fraternities, and we have um, uh, leadership uh, training as uh, in, in how to manage and the importance of setting the right example, you'll find that in our courses and the business school and management and so forth. Um, we also have, um, um, gosh, in, in so many activities with our, our ROTC or uh, programs with, uh, with, with just, uh, 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 just everything, especially, um, all the students are pretty much involved, not just with studies, but activities in the community, uh, helping the less fortunate in, in neighboring cities, uh, doing things for the elderly, uh, working in particular with our, our medical school to provide services to people who can't afford um, uh, medical care in, in certain areas. So all of these things build not just leadership, but character. And I think that's something that's very special and important in a university uh, education, uh, getting to serve and to get to know your, your fellow citizens your, around this world and, and uh, understanding their issues and uh, using your skills and knowledge that you're acquiring uh, to help. And there's all kinds of opportunities uh, like that, uh, especially in, in uh, rural or Areas where you don't have so many facilities as you do in the big in the big cities. Yes, we okay. also have a yeah we also have an Indian uh, students. So we have an Indian club, and yeah, they, they, uh, each year uh, Indian club uh, they will have a Indian New Year um, party. So all the students are invited. It, it's it's very nice. It's pretty big at LMU. There's another question. Uh, which is the nearest international airport to LMU? The nearest airport is uh, a little over 50 miles away in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that's K-N-O-X-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Knoxville, Tennessee. And um, our, our students go there. We have uh, uh, some classes there in our business programs. And it's a um, it's a city of about uh, uh, what three four hundred thousand people maybe now, but that's that's the uh, the biggest uh, the biggest place. 
biggest airport in the nearest. It's about an hour away. Um, located in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's uh, the third largest uh, city in Tennessee. Any further questions? Okay, uh, one more question. How many undergraduate international students does LMU have? We have it, Father. We have about 100 uh, undergraduate international students uh, at LMU. We don't have a many Indian uh, undergraduate students yet, uh, but we have uh, so many is in the Master of Science and uh, our medical school as well. Yeah, we want to uh, make a, a special effort uh, this year and, and next to increase those numbers. Uh, this is a, a top priority of, of our president and, uh, and senior uh, uh, people here at the at the university uh, we most of our undergraduates historically have uh, international students have been athletes but we want uh, uh, students at the undergraduate and graduate level from all around this world and uh, we we're making a, a very special effort to uh, to bring them and to encourage them and the students who are here really love it. They, they really love the, the personal attention and the, uh, the beauty of the area and, and welcome the chance to get, a, get the education here uh, at, at, at Lincoln Memorial University. There's a very specific question as well here. Are there any Pakistani students? Are there any Pakistani students? Yeah. Um, I don't believe so, uh, but yeah. but you know there's there's there are many 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 uh, uh, international students uh, in Knoxville at uh, the University of, of Tennessee, and and they have uh, plenty of Indian students, Pakistani students, students from from all over the world. But of course, uh, University of Tennessee Knoxville, what do they have? Thirty forty thousand students now. And, um, you know, that's where you go to a class and you go in the, in the classroom, the lecture hall, and there may be 300 students. Um, and that's fine for some people. Uh, but you might just find that you need leaving home for the first time and studying abroad to be in a place where you walk into class and there's 13. And uh, you, how many people will you know who are friends, uh, American or international, in a very large school? But I'm, I know in Knoxville at University of Tennessee, there are, there are Pakistanis and, and, and students from India and, and all around the world. Um, they, they just have more of them. It's a, it's a bigger school. Um, it's another question, which I think you've covered before, but the question asks, what are the SAP scores needed for scholarships? Do you maybe want to pull up that slide, which has the SAT um, scores and the GPA? SAT. Yeah, that, that slide has had the, um, the SAT scores, I mean the ACT scores, uh, we sent uh, to you, Deborah, a conversion chart, chart to show what the SAT scores are. So maybe you can, maybe you can share it. Uh, a little later with everybody. Okay, you go ahead. I will, I will, I will put this in the Dropbox. Oh, the conversion you sheet? Can, yeah, conversion sheet. Okay. Okay. All right, let me see. If, 
you have a score, a SAT score of say a, a 11 or 1200 somewhere in that range, and uh, you can see a 3.2 to 3.5 grade point average, you may get six or seven thousand dollars reduced. If you have a score of over 1200 and a grade point average of 3.7, 3.8, you may get nine to ten thousand dollars off, which is half the cost of tuition almost. What is the highest amount of a scholarship that's um, possible? Well, it could be full scholarship if you're just that okay. high of a student with incredible uh, test scores. But normally it's what, Lily, 10 to 12,000, something like that? Uh, 10 to, um, I mean, you're, uh, you mean uh, a scholarship, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, I believe so. Let me go back here. Yeah, our scholarship basically start from a two thousand dollars all the way to the full scholarship. There's okay. this, there's the, there's this chart. Tuition fees and scholarships. Well, uh, this is just set up for AC. I mean ACT, SAT. Yeah. yeah, SAT. We have a convention chart. I think I just put it in the chat box to see if you can click on it and then open it. Somehow I'm having a hard time to. But you, you can see, you can see, uh, really uh, super outstanding grades could be eleven thousand, twelve thousand, ten thousand, and that you look down here under tuition rates, the undergraduate base rate twenty one four eighty. So that would be almost half the tuition off. Yeah, another thing about uh, LMU's, uh, in, I mean undergraduate tuition is. From a one to twelve credits, credit hours, we pay. You know how much, but uh, between uh, twelve hours to sixteen hours, actually, it's free. You just oh, pay. Okay. Yeah, it's free. International students are required to have at least a minimum of uh, twelve hours per semester, but uh, most of the students will take sixteen, fifteen, sixteen hours per semester. To be able to graduate in four years, so <laughs> looks like our credit hours rate is uh, 895. Actually, it's about uh, under seven seven hundred dollars per credit. Uh, I have another question here. I'm a graduate student. How can I contact a university professor? Professor, you can contact us yeah. first. We will ref we will refer you to the professor. Yeah, we'll we'll help get you in touch with the right uh, the school, the right professors for more detailed questions about the graduate programs. If if we can't answer them for you, we'll we'll be happy to do that. Uh, do you have any students from Central America? Yes. Yes, we uh, do. Yes, I think so. On, on our our soccer team soccer teams from Brazil and so forth, and we have other students from Latin America, yes. Um, a couple of other questions. Do you have a PhD in administration of justice? Like, uh, yeah, Lily, would that be like a no. criminal justice? Well, we do not have a PhD. We have a, we have a master in criminal justice. Okay. But we have and, law uh, <laughs> I guess at this that level will be our law school then. Right. I'm not sure what this means, but it says, do you accept direct applications for this such a program? I guess you would just have to apply through the website, right? Yes. yes. We are here. Uh, we recruit and we do ad admissions also. And mm -hmm. also at DSO, we reach, we, our team we issue i 20s as well. Okay. Right. Um, we can take a final couple of questions. Anyone with any further questions?
Okay, in that case, we will call this webinar to an end. Um, participants, thank you so much for attending. And do feel free to look up the links. I've sent the links in the um, chat box. Uh, all three links are available there. Please look them up um, in you know uh, when you um, log out of this webinar. And Ambassador um, Staples and uh, Lily Collins, thank you so much for your presence here and for talking us through the advantages of rural universities and for talking about your own university as well thank you for answering the question so patiently um i hope you have a good night and students i hope you have a good day ahead okay well thank you yeah, very much we we've, we've enjoyed it and we wish all of you the very best if you have any questions or want further information about uh, lincoln memorial or just in general uh, please be in touch with us and we'll try to help answer your questions for you thank you very much Y'all have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay.